Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video of me sitting on my floor in my new flat. I promise I won't be like this forever, but I will be for the next several videos. And I know this because I am filming several videos right now. <laughs> so we all know typically on this channel when I talk about political things or just anything really, it is oftentimes US focused. It's very American based and that is because most of you are in the US. I think about 55% of you are in the US. And also because like a lot of the time it's just like way funnier. <laughs> the extremism is just like a lot funnier a lot of the time. And also like typically you go through reddits and Twitter accounts. It's almost always Americans because again, a lot of them are more extreme and loud. But today I thought that I would change it up a little bit and I would do something focused on the UK because that is where I live. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, and you may be familiar with this uh, organization that I'm going to be talking about. In the US, they call them Turning Point USA. And here in the UK, super creatively, it's Turning Point UK. <laughs> Currently in the UK, transphobia is at like, a ridiculously high level. It's gotten worse over the past few years. And I know this as I have heard other trans creators and trans people talk about this. And that is unfortunately largely contributed to JK Rowling and her speaking about it and giving other transphobes a voice. And it is making an undeniable impact on trans youth and trans lives here in the UK, which is so awful. It's so horrific and it's, so backwards. It's shocking and bizarre to me that we are able to move in a backwards direction when we absolutely should be moving forwards. That brings a lot of posts to accounts like this that are rooted in transphobia, such as this one. Anyone who supports children becoming transgender should have their hard drive checked by the police. Firstly, children don't become transgender. They are trans. Um, I believe you mean supports them in affirming their gender. Uh, and again, I don't understand what checking my hard drive is gonna do. I don't know why this assumption of like, <laughs> people who support trans kids and trans rights are like groomers and are some weird sick twisted people. When in reality, a very large majority of sex offenders and just criminals in general are cisgendered uh, and also a lot of them I'm sure are anti-trans because unfortunately a lot of people are anti-trans. People who are fighting for the rights of children to be themselves are not typically, not typically terrible people. Like sometimes, yeah, but you get that in every group. If you search my internet history, all you're going to find is me Googling words to make sure that I am using them correctly. <laughs> and photos of Hyunjin. Those are what you're gonna find. If you wanna see all that, knock yourself out, but you're not gonna find anything incriminating. Let me search through your search history though, because I'm sure I can find some weird shit on there if you're so obsessed with children's gender. If there are blackouts this winter, I hope the public starts to wake up to the severe cost of the government's net zero agenda, because actually when they say net zero, they mean it. It is a scamper to zero meat, zero holidays, zero cars, zero cheap and reliable energy. If we're talking about the spike in energy costs, that's got nothing to do with renewable energy or net zero at all. That's to do with the fact that there is a literal war going on and this is happening in the entire world's energy prices. Renewable energy will actually help solve that problem because we won't need to rely on those countries to get it. Um, zero holidays, I don't know where you got that from, but that's a very capitalist viewpoint and we're kind of against that. <laughs> we're trying at the moment to push a four day work week. I don't know if you've heard about that, but that's an extra day off in a week and also very, very much for having mental health days, more maternal leave, the ability to take time off when you want to. Even from a capitalistic viewpoint, you are much more productive when you are both mentally and physically well. And you can take a lot of time off and do just as much work because you haven't burnt yourself out. That's a really fun fact for you. Um, so no one's trying to get rid of holidays except 
capitalists and uh that's you that's on they're on your side maybe deal with them not us i want more holidays um i don't want to call them holidays though i want to call them just days that you can have because sometimes you don't want to work on Sunday, 1,065 migrants crossed the channel in small boats to enter the UK illegally. This year, at least 35,000 have made that crossing. Not tackling immigration is why the Conservatives will be wiped out at the next election. I do not understand what the big deal with immigrants is. I don't understand the problem with immigration. I don't understand, I don't understand the problem. I don't get it. I don't understand it at all. Right now, this is a personal issue. Um, because Kat, my best friend slash flatmate, had to leave the country a month ago because her visa ran out because, you know, they for some reason are like, okay, you're allowed to live and work here for two years. And then at the end of that two years, you have to get out, leave the country, leave your job, leave your friends, leave everything you have. You have to, you have to leave all of that behind and then apply again and spend literally thousands of pounds and maybe, maybe we'll let you back in to continue living your life. Very lucky that she is white, firstly, uh, has a job already here because I <laughs> pay her, I hire her. And she has my family here who had to write a letter saying that if everything goes badly and she ends up not with a job, etc., they will support her. Um, so she's very lucky to have had all of those things. A lot of people don't have those things. So a lot of people can't enter the country, which makes no sense because literally who freaking cares who lives here? Countries are made up. They are just pieces of land with imaginary freaking lines drawn that people have decided to die for. It doesn't make sense. Let people live places. I really, really struggle to understand the problem with immigration. I really, truly do not get it. There is no such thing as a trans child. Children with mental health issues should be given the appropriate support and therapy, not irreversible treatments and mutilation. That's child abuse. You are so right. Children should be given the right mental health treatment and therapy when they need it. And that includes trans children who are in fact very real. They are in fact trans and they do require therapy because being trans is a really difficult thing to be. It causes a lot of discrimination. It causes a lot of confusion. There's a lot of bullying. It's not feeling like yourself within your own body. It's a lot of struggles and a lot of pain. And then people like you out here preaching transphobia and saying that they don't exist, that they aren't real, that they aren't valid, that them existing as themselves is being abused. You are out here pushing transphobia. You are pushing them to be mentally ill. They aren't trans because they're mentally ill. They're mentally ill because they're trans. But that mental illness isn't because of them being trans. It's because you have made them feel so bad about being trans. You have caused people to cause them harm because they are trans. If you stopped pushing this anti-trans agenda and all of this hate and bullshit directed at them, they would not be mentally ill anymore. They wouldn't have really high suicide rates and high rates of depression and dysphoria, etc. If they were offered the correct care and they were greeted with validity and love and acceptance, then we wouldn't have so much of a problem. People always, you talk about how you're worried about trans kids committing suicide more, so therefore being trans is bad. No, trans kids are committing suicide more because you've made them feel bad. Stop doing that and maybe the problem will be solved. I don't understand how you can get like one and one and make triangle. Like, f ah, mmm. There are only two genders. Women have XX chromosomes and men have XY chromosomes. Happy hashtag World Mental Health Day. It literally takes one, one quick, easy Google search to show that this isn't true. You Google how many gender chromosome variations are there and it comes up with the fact that there are six common ones, which are XX and XY, correct. But then there's also XXY, XXXY and XYYY. And then there are four rare ones as well. So that takes you to 10 different gender chromosome variations. So what point are you trying to prove here other than the fact that you did not take biology past year nine? Not everything is a Punnett square. 
All I learned about was blue eyes and brown eyes, but I know that green eyes and hazel eyes exist. I know there are other eye colors out there. And I also know that it's not just one shade of blue and one shade of brown and other genetics play into that and get the variations between them. You can't just draw a Punnett square and know how genetics work. This isn't year nine biology, right? This is the real world where like actual things exist that aren't just simplified for a small young teenage mind. And then we go back to another fun anti-immigration one. Why should we as taxpayers, squeezed to a pulp, be expected to offer bed, board, and benefits to those entering our country illegally? Now this takes me to the question of, do you think that maybe they wouldn't need that bed and board and food and things if you just let them get jobs? Just a thought? Like they clearly came into this country for a reason. They want to be here for a reason. And a lot of the time they also would like to contribute to that society and be fully integrated into the country because government welfare and those benefits are not very good. You don't get very good living conditions. And being an illegal immigrant, you would have to live with this constant fear of being found out and being deported. It is very difficult, if not impossible, to get a job because the repercussions of giving an illegal immigrant a job is hefty fines. You also can't find a flat or a place to live because living somewhere as an illegal immigrant, the landlords can face hefty fines. It's not a good life. They're choosing it for a reason. And if we got rid of this whole like living here illegally thing, maybe they would be able to get jobs and they would be able to pay their own taxes and they would be able to live places and pay for their own stuff. But you won't let them do that. Because even on top of that, the xenophobia is so bad and the racism is so bad that even if they aren't illegal immigrants, even if they're here legally, it is much harder to find a job, especially if you're a non-white immigrant, much harder to find a job because people are racist, people are xenophobic, people don't want you here. So if we got rid of racism and we got rid of xenophobia, this wouldn't be an issue because you're already paying the taxes for people's benefits and welfare, which I know you're against. You know what I'm against for my taxes? I have to pay for the freaking queen's funeral and the coronation that costs millions of pounds that I have absolutely no care for. I have to pay for the fucking government's daily lunch allowance of like 20 pounds, which is insane. And I have to pay their high salaries. I have to give so much money to so many things that I do not care for. I would much rather my tax money be going into helping people integrate into society and live good lives. I would much rather be paying for people to be able to get disability benefits. I'd rather be paying for the NHS and helping people who need help. Why are you complaining about helping people live better lives with your tax money and not complaining about all the unnecessary fancy decorations cherry on top bullshit that tax money actually goes into. They make it really fucking hard for immigrants to be here. It's not easy. They're doing it for a reason. Shut up. Oh my God. Why do children need to be exposed to drag queens? Why do drag queens want to expose themselves to children? Who benefits from this oddness? Let me spell this out for you. Real nice and simple. Adults can enjoy being around children because they want to teach them. They want to help them. Being a parent or a teacher or a caregiver can be very fulfilling for people. Why does anyone wanna be a parent? Why does anyone wanna be a teacher? I promise it's not for sexual gratification, not most of the time. So why do you think this is any different? Drag queens want to spend time with children in their drag personas in order to teach children that it's okay to be different. Because when they were children and they expressed themselves, they were ridiculed, they were bullied, they were given terrible mental health, they were oppressed, they were discriminated against, and they don't want other children to go through that. So the point is, 
drag queens want to be around children so that children think drag queens are normal and so that they think it's okay for them to be different and they're allowed to be who they want to be and express themselves how they want to express themselves. That's it. This whole thing that you make it so it's like, oh, if you want to be around children, you clearly want to have sex with them. Um, is that what you think when you're around children? Because that sounds like a bit of a self-tell there. If you see someone spending time with children and your first thought is, they're a molester, you really need help. Um, because either you're hanging around the wrong people or you yourself need therapy and to never come into contact with children. I love kids. I love spending time with children. I always have. As long as I can give them back at the end because they give me a headache. It's nice to teach children and to play with children and to make them happy. It's so lovely to see the way their freaking little eyes light up and how tiny their hands are. They're so cute. <laughs> ah! But that that's it. There is nothing sexual about the interaction at all. And it's really, really strange that so many people seem to put that spin on it. It's odd. It's weird. You need to do some self-reflection because what, what's wrong with you? On that exact same note, I'm going to finish off with this one. I'm confused as to how gay rights became trans rights. When did we go from let us get married to let grown men dance naked in front of your children? Like, I don't, I just don't understand how you jumped to this conclusion. Trans rights have been a conversation for decades. This is not a new thing. This is not a new conversation. Being trans is not a new idea. It's not a new thing. It's just become a really big talking point recently. And for some reason we've gone backwards and people have decided to hate trans people just because they need something to hate and somewhere to take their anger out. In 2000 and freaking 12 in New Zealand, we made it so you could change your gender to X. 2012, that was a decade ago. That was a year before gay marriage was even legalized. You could change your gender to X in order for gender non-conforming people, trans people, etc., were able to feel more comfortable and be something that better suited them. 2012, and you want to say that this is a new conversation? And guess what? No one cared. No one talked about it. I didn't even know this was a thing until 2017 when someone I knew did it. But like, guess what? It's not a big fucking deal. It doesn't have to be. Just let people exist the way that they want to and the gender that they are and the pronouns that they use it does not impact you. Trans rights are not about dancing around naked in front of children. Like, it's so weird. Teaching kids that they're allowed to be who they want to be has nothing to do with anything sexual at all. You should be teaching kids about their bodies when they're young. You should be teaching kids about consent. You should be teaching kids all about their bodies and making them feel comfortable and understanding what's going on. That is needed. When they're like, as young as like three years old, they need to know what their body is and they need to know what is and isn't okay. You can't just avoid these topics forever and you can't say that that's sexualizing children. It's their own bodies. They need to know what's going on. There is nothing sexual about a child or any situation a child is in. And when you make it that, it's a reflection on you. Trans rights and the fight for trans rights has been going on for decades. Just because you were able to ignore it before doesn't mean it wasn't a fight that was happening. Being trans isn't new and it's not going away anytime soon. I am 22 now, right? I knew trans people in primary school. People who were seven or eight, they fully knew. They identified as she, her, Everyone was totally cool with that because kids don't care, just for the record. No one questioned it, no one said anything, because kids know, and there is no point in telling them that they don't, and there is no point in telling them to try to hide it, because all that does is cause internal pain, and the pain of many people that can be avoided. Anyway, I have to go pick Cat up from the airport, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it here. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, a little bit about, you know, a different country in the world, the country where I live. I like to avoid it sometimes, but here we are. Uh, massive thank you to my 
Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a massive, massive thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Wolf, Toulouse, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Christy, Ikazel, The Alienated Librarian, Non-Euclid System, Skyla Dowd, Ishtar Hope, and Eldo. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. If you would like to become a patron, you can click the top link in the description or go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. You get my videos a day early and podcasts a week early for as little as one pound a month and then go up from there. Follow me on Instagram, the queer kiwi and Twitter, that queer kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. Hey.